Welcome to Nerd Sports. Today we're going to talk about the interesting, intricate uh, sport of nothing I'm going to talk about. You're giving me that look again. No, I was waiting. I was waiting because, you know, you always started off with like some kind of random off the wall shit like we're going to cover curling today or something. And, and I, I was just waiting. And, we're, and you had. And, we're, and not, we're not covering curling. Because you, you had that hesitation in your voice. You, you're like. It was right there on the tip of your tongue, but you really don't have anything. So, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say curling, but I, then I just remembered that how much you don't like curling and everything. So Hey, no, I've got nothing against curling. I mean, it lets fat bartenders and, and, and barstool uh, occupants become Olympians. So Like hey, golf? No. <laughs> not, not like golf. Not like golf. No, not like golf. Okay. Anyway, so um, yeah, so uh, it kind of started off uh, this week. It actually, actually, this happened yesterday. There was a lawsuit filed against uh, Major League Baseball because of the whole fiasco surrounding this year's All Star Game. Uh, earlier in the year, uh, they had M MLB and the Players Union made the decision to move the All Star Game from Atlanta to Colorado. Uh, based on the misinformation that was put out about Georgia's election laws or voting laws, you know, requiring voter ID and everything like that. They were, you know, you, you get that, that, that left, you know, the, the left's talking points about how anything revolving, you know, revolving around uh, voter ID, it's somehow racist. Well, that's, that stems to actually the Jim Crow dogs back in the uh, yeah, and see, and that's a stick man argument, and it, and it's and it's nothing more than a mere just it's just a simple misdirection. And and let me explain to you why. If you're going to require us to have ID to to fly, to drive a car, to get a gun, to get a gun, how is it any different for you to prove that you are a a citizen and b a citizen of that precinct upon which you are voting in? During an election, how is that racist? I, I, but all that aside, um, we'll get into that in a minute. But uh, a conservative group, and this is coming from uh, 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 Reuters uh, uh, website. Uh, they're you know a very semi reputable uh, news source. There's also NBC News out there. There's also, um, I mean, this is being reported by multiple sites. I mean, it's there's there's a lot of information that's being put out there. But uh, it was a group of conservative um, small business owners. Um, it was a conservative group representing small businesses. They sued Major League Baseball and its players union over the decision to. Yeah, because they're missing out the on millions, right. hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, in a Monday night complaint, so this was filed last night, uh, Job Creators Network said that the defendants violated, and the defendants being Major League Baseball and the players union, they violated a 150 year old federal civil rights law designed to combat the Ku Klux Klan by purposefully and maliciously choosing to punish small business owners by moving the game rather than seek relief from state lawmakers. And it's, it's seeking to return the All-Star game to Truist Park outside of Atlanta. It's also seeking $100 million for damages for businesses and $1 billion of punitive damages. Um, as of right now, the game's still tentatively scheduled for July 13th at Denver's core field or Coors Field, which is where the Rockies play. Now, Major League Baseball and the Players Union did not immediately respond uh, for comment um, as of today, as of this morning, actually. Um, Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred, who, in my humble opinion, needs to be fired uh, just because of the way he's turning the game into a laughable spe you know, spectacle. But um, And uh, the Players Executive Director, Tony Clark, there are also listed as defendants in this. And this is, quote, a knee-jerk hypocritical and illegal reaction to misinformation about Georgia's new voting law. And this is coming from Alfredo Ortiz, the president of the Job Creators Network. Uh, the group's founder includes Bernie Marcus, the co-founder of the Atlanta-based Home Depot. Um, it called losses uh, from the game, moving the game staggering, including more than 8,000 canceled hotel reservations. Um, Georgia's new voting law was signed into law uh, in March by the uh, sitting governor, Republican Governor Brian Kemp. Uh, it added a new identification requirement for absentee ballots, uh, limited drop boxes, and it made, a, made it a misdemeanor to give water to people waiting 
uh, waiting in line to vote. Yeah, and the reason why that was is because in all reality, you're not that it's basically setting it up to where, hey, I'm I'm from uh, this yeah, it, it, section yeah. or a party. It, it's, it's it opened it's, the door to ballot you know, to 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 uh, polling or, or uh, campaigning, and, and and campaigners are federally prohibited from being near or within a certain distance of polling uh, of uh, polling locations. Yeah. And and, that, and and that's not going against one party or the no, other. No, and that's it's for and it's all parties. yeah, and it's and it's it's an inclusive thing on both sides. Now, uh, opponents have said that the law was designed to suppress voting uh, voting by blacks. Other Republican led states including Florida, Iowa and Texas have also moved to impose new voting restrictions since the 2020 election. Now, do I think that this is a racist move? Absolutely not. And it doesn't matter what side of the aisle that I may or may not vote on. It, it It's just, it's simple. It's a simple deterrent put into place, you know, that we can put into place to ensure the validity and the legality of our elections. Now, uh, on this, I'm actually going to play devil advocate because I had this conversation with a, oh, a this will be fun. F- friend of mine is... If you're going with the data and everything, they, the people that are minorities and everything like that, they can't get IDs and they can't do this. I mean, like, you do realize it's 2020. That, 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 I mean, it, it, they, they want to have, you know, factual stuff, but when they actually went down to those communities and everything, they were like, yeah, I have a driver's license. I have an ID. I have something that I identify. I have to show it all the time. Right. And, and see, okay, so to that point, trying to say that blacks and other minority groups are not capable of getting state IDs or driver's licenses in it, in, it, in, it, in of itself is kind of a backhanded racist comment. Yeah. Because you're implying that this particular demographic or those demographics – or either not smart enough, or they're incapable of getting something. You and know? I'm still trying to figure out where they get the data. I was like, are you getting the data from the 1960s and 1950s? Well, again, it's it's a stick man argument, and it's because, you know, with, with the 2020 presidential election that, you know, I mean, at the risk of becoming or sounding very polarizing, the... If you say something to get us thrown off the YouTube, I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> hey, you know what? They they can't. They, it's really strange, and this is this is nothing on you or anything like that. It's their analytics. If you talk about the voting or any, I think it might be down, but I'm not really sure. If you talk about voting, if you talk about the virus, well, to that extent, to that extent, to that extent, any article, link, whatever, it doesn't matter what social media platform they were using. It it. it I didn't see this until I saw a post about it on Facebook. Yeah. Okay, and that was this morning. And we all know about dear leader Zuckerberg, you know, and he's got his team of, of, of you know, post-Nazis out there. And, and I use that term very tongue-in-cheek, but, I mean, it's, it's you know, the, the, the definition of fascism is to suppress thoughts that are not of your own. I mean... Yeah, I'd, to be have, to be you know, I mean, it, it's fine to be liberal. It's fine to be conservative. It's even fine to be moderate. But you have to be open minded enough to hear both sides of the argument. And that thing is is giving giving away. So yeah, it's all good. But um, let me get, hold on. Yeah, you know, we're not stopping. I'm, I'm going to keep right on going. You know, there we go. See, look, problem solved. Okay, so um, for those of our, our of our listeners listening on Spotify alone, we have uh, some uh, sound dampening paneling on the on the wall and one of the panels started to fall yeah don't do uh the the three m sticky tape that doesn't really work no, no we were so we were, we were they were so worried when i was uh redoing this room to to do that that the sticky tape would stay there forever yeah problem fixed i guess <laughs> right there you go okay so um but it, it, you know it 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 really it defies logic to me uh, because when you sit there and try to say that this group or this group or this group can't get ID, it, it's to it, it. It's basically saying that 
they have problems in their society that they can't do it. Because yeah, you're either can't... you're you're either uh, I mean you're you're alluding to the fact that somehow either they're not educated enough or you're saying that the system is so rigged. But we know for a fact that these groups are able to get these forms of identification because and and, and this is this is not a racist comment by any stretch of the imagination, but there are a large number of minorities who are on welfare. And in order to get welfare, they have to have ID. Yeah. Okay. Now, <laughs> go, to get you know, any, so to so get any any kind of help and everything, you need to verify that you, one, you're a United States citizen. Mm -hmm. Two, you you have uh, everything going against you to get these benefits, and, that, and you have to have an ID. I mean, that's what this troubles me is they're trying to make this argument. It was like, well, these people can't get this. I was like. And, and, and that's why it's called a stick man argument. It's a misdirection. Yeah, I mean, you, because you're diverting your attention away from the actual issue. And in, in, and in this case, it's like we're trying to help ensure, the, you know, again, the validity and the legality of our election process. Because if we're not able to hold true elections, then what's the point of having a democratic republic? Okay, we're not a democracy. We're a democratic republic. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of people get that mixed up. That's what's really sad is, I mean, it's in our national anthem if we actually put it in our schools again. Yeah, you know, so, but, I mean, it's of the people, for the people, and by the people. Okay. Yeah. Now, again, all of these major corporations, these large organizations like Major League Baseball, like the NBA, like the NFL, I mean, the, they're bowing down to these these popular talking points without doing any research. And you and I have gone over ad nauseum in the past on, on previous episodes about if you're going to come to the, to the podium with an argument, sound educated, do your homework. Yeah, I mean, we even fixed one today about the Menendez brothers on our psychos and sociopaths. Yeah, I mean, we actually talked to somebody that did research for like six months. Right. So, I mean, nobody is above reproach. But if you're going to come to the table and yeah. you're going to you're going to throw your, your, your stance out there, this is my position, do your homework. Yeah. And, and, and be convicted in... in you know, in your that, stance. What was that? What was that thing for? From I mean, this is the nerd part from Captain America. Mm -hmm. That he, it was in the comics and they brought it into the movie. Is uh, fuck, I just can't remember it about standing. Uh... Oh, see now you got me thinking about it, and it's right there on the tip of my tongue. I know. I'm doing this. Uh, I did the same thing. But you know, I. I wholeheartedly believe that the game should have never been moved from Atlanta. Would, would traffic be an unusual nightmare in that area? Absolutely. Anybody who lives in Atlanta will tell you that traffic's a nightmare to begin with. But Atlanta themselves, they have put so much time, effort, money, and resources. We went over this in, I think it was one of our first sport, nerd sports episodes about about the All-Star game getting moved. Yeah, we, we talked about it. You know, our... and so... You know, it, it, if, 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 if it's not going to get moved back this year, it needs to be in Atlanta next year. These businesses and these hotels and everything like that, they need to be compensated somehow. And that compensation absolutely needs to come from both the Players Union and the Major League Baseball itself. Because, they, they, again, they made this knee-jerk reaction because why? The left said, this is racist. And without doing their due diligence – and looking at seeing exactly what the law says, and and actually standing back and getting out of your own way and looking at the at the problem, okay, we've got a problem with people voting more than once. We've got a problem with people who don't live in these districts and didn't live in these in these precincts, or even in these states coming in and affecting those elections. You know, and and, and it goes even as far as like a non national scale. You've got you've got special interest groups that that would love to see one party win versus the other. They're bussing people in. And I'm not naming any names, but his initials is George Soros. You know, it, 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 I mean, the paper trail is out there, but nobody wants to, you know, nobody has the resources available to pull the trigger and, and pull this guy into a courtroom 
without his army of lawyers tying it up in litigation for years. And you know, and it's it's just it's it's sad. It's it's embarrassing to not only America, but to the game. And I and I've stated on one more more than one occasion, baseball is perfect. What makes it watchable is that we get to watch imperfect men play it. Yeah. But what's making the game unreasonably and unfathomably unwatchable is the way that Robert Manfred and the Players Union is handling the game now. Yeah. You know, we've got these seven inning double headers. We've got the runner in scoring position for extra innings. And that was said. You know, and now they're talking the about robotic strike zones. They're talking about pitch clocks. I mean, the pitch clock thing, yeah, I get that because I don't want a damn pitcher standing on the mound for a minute, a minute and a half in between pitches. That's going to drag the game out unnecessarily. If a pitcher can't make up his mind as to whether or not he's going to throw a pitch, then he needs to go find something else to do. Yeah. He needs to get on the same page with his catcher, and that is on. I mean, that's from the top down, from all the from from the ownership of the group, ownership group of the team, all the way down to the player. They need to get on the same sheet of music. They need to figure out how the game is supposed to be played and play it. Yeah. Okay. Now. By the way, I found that speech. When. And, and we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. Well, actually, you know what? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. And this is not coming from the actual movie. This is actually coming from the uh, Civil War comic book, the first one. And it state, uh, Cap- what, this is what Captain America said. And this actually goes true today. It doesn't matter what the press say. It doesn't matter what the politicians or the mob says. It doesn't matter if the whole country decides something's wrong. It is something right. The nation who founded on one principle above all else, the requirements that we stand up what we believe, no matter the odds and consequences. When the, uh, when the mob and the press and the whole world tells you to move, your job is to plant your feet like a tree beside the river of truth and tell the whole world, no, you move. Exactly. See? <laughs> It's pretty sad that we actually can come up, and, and, and I've been saying this for the longest time, is like, why do you read comics? Why do you read books or fantasy and everything? You don't get anything from it sometimes. I was like, no, there's sometimes you actually get like uh, a glimmer of philosophy that can go through your whole entire day yeah. or your life to give you something to the point of, hey, this is how I should act. Exactly. You know, <clears throat> where, you know, the world needs to be drawing its moral compass from the good book. We draw our, a lot of our moral compasses, or you know, a, a lot of our moral standards, from comic books. Yeah. And to that effect, those writers are affected by a lot of sources, to include the Bible. You know, and <clears throat> but. Or Pat, even going, or going into the fact of uh, when I was reading uh, Faith of the Fallen. Uh, people were telling me, it's like, why are you so uh, anti-socialist? And I was like, well, I'm anti-socialist because I read Faith of the Fallen, and it gives you a detailed look of what uh, uh, socialism is and what capitalism is. Yeah, and, and, but, you know, and, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give myself a hard, hard wall here, but so that way I don't get too far into the weeds. But when we're talking about socialism, okay, your personal property is a direct representat- representation of your time and labor. Exactly. I'm not going to bust my ass all year in a classroom and make an A for Susie J. Rottencrotch or Billy Joe Fuck All to dick off all year, get an F, and to have my A split in half and we'd be given two C's just because it's fair. No. Yeah, and they, it, it's, they... it's about ingenuity. It's about motivation. It's about tenacity. And they've done case studies with students of how things can, uh, oh, this is how socialism is. And it's a grading system, how everybody gets the same grade, even though someone busts their uh, butts for like three days with no sleep, hyped up on Adderall, trying to get all this stuff studied up. And a person that just comes in, it's like, I just put my name on it and just A, B, C, D. Uh, yeah. Abacadabit it. That yeah. Was, that was a military but, term. Yeah, abacadabit it. But yeah, getting back to the story here, it, it yeah, 
I mean, Major League Baseball and the Players Union stepped on their proverbial dicks here. They really did. Instead of standing firm and saying, no, look, we made a commitment to this city, we made a commitment to the surrounding communities, the game will be represented properly yeah. in the city that we chose. Exactly. That's what's no, really they decided to go the political route and for expediency and optics, and I hate that term, optics, because if it looks good, it is good. No, that's a bunch of horse shit, and they know it. It's almost as bad as the whole, uh, and I, I don't, I, I, I forgot to talk to you about this. It's about, uh, like, the new Army uh, commercial. Have you seen that? Uh, the, the whole. You don't, you don't have to be smart enough to be a, a helicopter pilot deal. <laughs> and all, all the other stuff. I mean, it shows diversity in the Army and everything, which yeah. it hands down. Like choose your warrior or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It, I'm, I'm like, angry, come on, man. angry cop, angry cop did it. it. It was, it was so hilarious. Yeah, I'm gonna it. have to look up that video. But I mean, like, I'll, I see I'll that. I see, I, I see the the commercials for that new recruitment uh, campaign that they've got. And I'm just like, but it's for the woke crowd. I, I'm just sitting there going, you, you know, they stopped giving dollars to sports teams like NASCAR teams to put their name on a car, which was, you know. I mean that was that was those were good recruitment dollars spent, you know. And now all of a sudden we're gonna sit there and go, choose your inner warrior. Oh well, no, not everybody's a warrior. Some people are truck drivers. Some people are, you know, pharmacists. You know, whatever. It doesn't matter. But anyways, that's getting way off into the woods. Yeah. Other news in Major League Baseball. Um, tomorrow is going to be the inaugural Lou Gehrig Day. Um, these efforts include special moments at Major League Ballparks and a series of fundraising efforts aimed at supporting charitable organizations. Uh, notably, the expanded access protocol uh, program at the uh, Sean Healy uh, and AMG Center for ALS, which ALS, you know, basically, okay, so whenever Lou Gehrig died, they didn't know what he died of, so they just called it Lou Gehrig disease. It was later called ALS. Um, so it, you know, I mean, it. A lot of the, the, I think a lot of the fundraising and a lot of the, the charitable stuff that they're doing for Lou Gehrig Day is going to go towards combating ALS, which I agree with. It's cool. Um, there's going to be a fourth inning video feature starring Steve Gleason, uh, ALS advocate Steve Gleason, and and I'm getting this article from uh, MLB.com, but. Uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, ALS advocate Steve Gleason will be featured in a special bar ballpark moment highlighted during the fourth inning uh, or pregame at some ballparks uh, of all Lou Gehrig Day games. Uh, during this moment, a video created specific or especially for Lou Gehrig Day will be shown to offer a glimpse into Gleason's own voice as he recites a part of Gleason's uh, Gehrig's famous luckiest man retirement speech. This opportunity is largely thanks to Project uh, Euphonia, a Google research team focused on helping people with atypical speech be better understood. Uh, the approach is centered on analyzing speech recordings to better train speech recognition models for those still able to speak and on creating authentic personalized voices for those no longer able to speak, uh, especially with ALS. Um, I believe uh, one of the more profile people that had ALS was Stephen Hawking. Yeah. Okay. Um, and he spoke through a computer. That wasn't his real voice. That was just a computer-generated thing. It just happened to be that was his, you know, that was Stephen Hawking's voice right there. I mean, as far as anybody knew, that's what he sounded like. Anyways. Wait a minute. That if you're going to make a joke, let's hold up on that. Yep. That wasn't No, no, no. God, God, no. That makes no sense. Oh, uh, but in a hindsight note uh, about... Because, uh, oh man, that guy that did that, uh, did the actually Stephen Hawking movie, uh, <laughs> he had a, he did an interview with Stephen Hawking and everything. Mm -hmm. and he's like, man, that's the most frustrating thing I ever, ever done. Because you had, you asked the question, you had to wait probably about three to four or five minutes for him to answer. Yeah, because he's having you, to type it out with sure his eyes. A, yeah, and you got to make sure that uh, the question's really good. And I made the stupidest question you could possibly do. It, he was like, "Man, I just feel so mentally challenged after that." <laughs> so. Yeah, but uh, let me see here. Club activations. It's uh, 
Uh, Major League Club's home on Lou Gehrig Day will host special ceremonies and activities at, the ball, at their ballparks. Uh, many clubs work closely with the Lou Gehrig Day Committee uh, to develop those special activations, which include participation by the ALS community in ceremonial first pitches, on-field recognition, and the national anthem, and more. Um, uh, each Lou Gehrig Day, uh, on Lou Gehrig Day, each home club will also display a four ALS logo. It's a four hyphen ALS. Four was because that was Lou Gehrig's number. But uh, uh, four ALS logos and ballparks commemorating Gehrig's uniform number. Additionally, all players, managers, and coaches will wear a special patch on their uniforms. While the red ALS, four ALS wristbands will be available to be worn in, in game. Clubs with an off day on June 2nd will observe Lou Gehrig Day on June 3rd. So, I mean, they're just going to continue. It's kind of like Jackie Robinson Day. Everybody wears 42 on that specific day. And, and clubs that are off, those teams observe it either the day before or the day after. Um, but, you know, and it's kind of funny. Um, and I, was, I put some forethought into what I was going to wear today for today's episode. Because, you know, I always wear something sports-related whenever we're, doing, whenever we're shooting the show. I hadn't noticed. Well... Anyways, uh, <laughs> you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about MLB moving, you know, that lawsuit against Major League Baseball and the Players Union and their knee-jerk reaction, let's call a spade a spade, it's a knee-jerk reaction, to move the game out of Atlanta based on misinformation that they were just basically regurgitating about the voter laws in Georgia, Okay. Um, talking about how it was racist and everything like that. Well, we're talking about Jackie Robinson Day. You know, he was the first, pl you know, colored player to break into the major leagues, and everybody recognizes that. We need to do that. You know, we needed to do that. Now, today I chose to wear Ted Williams' jersey, okay? Okay. Uh, Ted Williams, arguably the best hitter to ever play the game, uh, ever. Only man to ever bat 400 for, you know, for a season. Took two, two breaks in his career to fly uh, jets for the Marine Corps, both in World War II and Korea. Uh, still managed to hit over 500 home runs. Anyway, now, as you and I were traveling to Vernon, or back from Vernon, um, we were listening to The Way I Heard It by Mike Rowe, that podcast. Yeah. And he was talking about Ted Williams and how Ted Williams was half Hispanic. And had he and had he made that known, he might not have been able to play Major League Baseball the way that he did. Um, Which is really sad. It, it is sad. It is a very sad narrative of the state of the game back then. Um, you know, does racism still exist? Yes. Uh, will it ever go away? No. Um, is there ways that we can combat it? Absolutely. Do I agree with the racism? Absolutely not. I think that it it has no place. In society, it has no place in our national pastime. It has no place anywhere. It's just unfortunate that it's one of those things that we're always going to contend with. Now, you know, it, it I mean, it, when I look at baseball, I look at baseball as that microchasm of America. I mean, it, it's, it's everything that was wrong and everything that is right with our country. Um, you know, the fact that, you know, yes, the, the game exercised, seg you know, segregation vehemently, especially the teams from the South. When Jackie Robinson was first making his rounds through his first, you know, when he was making his way through his first season as a major league ball player, they would go to those, those Southern teams and, and then, and, and, and you would see a lot of, or read reports of a lot of local governments giving the the Brooklyn Dodgers a lot of crap. Uh, you know, Jackie would have to stay in, in uh, he would have to make accommodations separate from the team because hotels wouldn't allow coloreds to stay there. Uh, ballparks would be refusing or would be threatening to uh, forfeit the uh, game. For, you know, the the would would. They were trying to force the Dodgers into forfeiting their games because they didn't allow colored players on the field, things of that nature. Um, we eventually got past that. Uh, Jackie Robinson himself, yes, did make a lot of avenues. Uh, op he opened up a lot of avenues for players 
that would have otherwise would have never been able to see a day on a major league field. Do I think that we need to uh, continue to strive uh, to to eliminate racism from the game? Yeah, but it, it's not specific to the um, discrimination against players of Hispanic, Asian. You know, I mean, we're we're not targeting white players only. Okay, it, it's it's not it's not one of these. You're a Caucasian player, so we're going to target you as the reason why we have an anti-racism program. No, no, that's not it at all. Because, you know, we, we hear terms like reverse racism. And I think that that's a misnomer because racism is just that. It's exactly racism. And it doesn't matter what color your skin is. It doesn't matter what ethnicity that you hail from. You can be racist regardless of the time of day. What, you know, what pot, you know, what part of the year you're in it doesn't matter you can be racist everybody has that capacity and I will I will vehemently sit here on and I will we will go on air and we will debate that till we're both blue in the face with anybody that is willing to come on here and talk about how one group is not racist versus the other I'll call bullshit on that all day every day because you 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 can be racist and somehow get a pass because of the color of your skin and, and like what is it because you're entitled to it somehow i no i that's a double standard if you're going to apply a standard to one group of players you need to apply that group you know that standard to every group of players make it a universal standard so that way you're not targeting anybody you yeah. know it, it, it's it, kind of funny though is uh going looking through all this stuff and everything mm -hmm. and you know Everybody thinks because we see the racism between uh, people that are white and uh, black people and everything, or white against Mexicans and everything. Yeah. Nobody talks about how Asians are really racist. Well, like, you know, I've, it, I've it, had I've had Asian people tell me flat out, it's like, no, I think a, uh, Asians are the most racist people I've ever met, and they're Asian. Not to say, you know, who's high and up or everything yeah. like that, but it's just one of those things that I was like, really? Yeah, I mean, like, okay, so you look at my family. You know, not my immediate family, but, but people that share the same surname. We have Indonesian, we have Asian, we have Pacific Islander, we've got black, we've got white, we've got Native American, um, European, which, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, we, I mean... The Skelton family is kind of a global thing, you know. Um, you know, so to insinuate that just because I'm white, somehow I've got some kind of privilege. Well, no, that's not it at all. Because, I mean, if white privilege were an actual thing, then you wouldn't hear a single white person bitching about how they, you know, I mean, you wouldn't hear them bitching about anything. I mean, because we would probably be the most well-off demographic in the world. You know, and, and it's not to say that we don't have our sullied past. I mean, every race, every, every, every ethnicity does. But I just think that we need to stop looking at it from a, from a generic standpoint and saying, well, you know, it, because the race card... Honestly, the race card is probably one of the easiest things to play, next to the next to the gender card. And yeah, I'm talking about just two biological genders, male and female. I mean, yeah, scientists keep on saying that the coronavirus is actually uh, uh, more prominent in men than women. What about the other seventy species? Right, or, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, we can make jokes off camera, and, and you know, yeah. and we have talking about well, I identify as a as an Apache helicopter, you know, it's like, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to be able to shoot Hellfire missiles out of my ass, you know. I mean, you can't. No, no, you can't. You can't. I mean, I mean, you could eat spicy food, and it feels like you've launched a Hellfire missile out of your ass, but all in all, our actuality, all you're hearing in the back of your mind is Johnny Cash's mariachi band playing while you hear Ring of Fire, but. <laughs> You know, but that's going to be in, that's going to, that's going to be in your head for the rest of the day. Day. You're yeah, welcome. Yeah. You are so welcome. But 
we, we just need, we need to stop looking at it from a, from a generic standpoint is that okay blacks Asians Hispanics and stuff like that they're the, they're the ones receiving the brunt of the racism as far as professional sports are concerned well no that's horseshit because if that were the tr if that were the case you wouldn't see nearly the percentage of black Hispanic um, Asian uh, players in the major league ranks that we do you know, and yeah. Or Puerto Ricans. Yeah, or, or, okay, so Caribbean, you know, when I, I'm talking about Hispanic, I'm, I'm kind of including all-inclusive there because, I mean, but but Caribbean players, uh, European players, Asian players, Japanese players, uh, black players, it, I mean, come on. You know, it it's an old, tired argument that has lost its steam because of the advances that we've made in the game. You know, and I'm not talking about from a, from a technological or even from a mechanical standpoint. I'm talking about from a social standpoint. We've desegregated the game. We have tons, tons of black players in the Hall of Fame. Hispanic players, uh, Caribbean players, Dominican player, or players... Uh, Ichiro Suzuki is going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Fight me on that. Okay. Um, unless uh, Otani gets, you know, takes a complete total nosedive in his career, by the, by the time he is done playing in the major leagues, he's going to have a Hall of Fame type career. I mean, look, I mean, for example, I mean, we've got Tony Gwynn. King Griffey Jr., Ernie Banks, uh, Willie Mays, I mean Jackie Robinson, these are all black players. They're all in the Hall of Fame. If we were truly that racist of a sport, if we were truly that racist of a country, that's, th those inclusions into, our, in, into one of the most storied halls of fame, I mean, the hallowed ground that is Cooperstown, New York, would not include any players of any color or any other ethnicity besides white Caucasians. So to sit there and tell me that we're going to move the all-star game because we think that you telling us that blacks and all these other, I mean, every racial demographic has to have voter ID is somehow racist and it beckons back to Jim Crow laws, I'm sorry. Jim Crow laws, that's a bit of a stretch because I can't think of the last time that we saw a news story where somebody was strung up in a tree. Yeah. I can't tell you the last time that I heard anything about somebody, regardless of their color, being drugged behind a car down a dirt-ass country road and left for dead out in the middle of the backwoods country somewhere. I can't, you know, stuff like that, I'm sure it happens, but it... It's usually because it's the beginning of a serial murderer. It's got nothing to do with race. Yeah, again, racism exists. Does it need to be wiped off the face of the planet and eradicated from the annals of history? Eradicated, yes. From, you know, I mean, do we need to end it? Absolutely. But will it be removed from history? It shouldn't be because we need to learn from it so that way we don't repeat it. Exactly. You can't make something unhappen just, be, you know, just by hitting the delete button. It's like taking down all these statues that you don't agree with. Oh no, you're, you're renaming army posts. You're, you're, you know, you're absolutely wrong. I don't, I don't know where you're coming from on this because I know that you're being sarcastic. Yeah, right I'm now. being very sarcastic okay. because <clears throat> uh, uh, a lot of the people. Go ahead. I'm sorry. A lot. Uh, it's, it's like uh, the uh, Japan and uh, Germany. Uh, history of World War II. Okay? Germany tells its kids in schools, like, yes, we did these uh, uh, really bad things. Yeah. We did horrible, horrible things. And it's depending on the uh, uh, county of, in Germany, what they actually put in there and everything, how, how much detail they go in and everything like that. But Japan, they don't even a lot of the kids in Japan don't even know what kind of horrible things they've actually did in World War II. But it just goes in the state of uh, the culture of each place. 
Now, we, on the other hand, there's some things that just here recently has come to light that I knew about long beforehand. And a lot of people, like when I was uh, uh, talking to some coworkers and friends mm-hmm. of mine when I, uh, when, I was, uh, up, when I was working on my factory job, I won't name the company's name because they'll probably fire me or not hire me. Anyways, uh, the Watchmen uh, TV series came out and everything like that. And yeah. I, and uh, a friend of mine that watched it, who's probably probably about 52. Right. And he comes up to me and like, hey, I'm kind of curious about the Watchmen stuff. Did, did that Tuscan... That Tuscan... Uh, a riot. What, that, that was weird. Could you imagine that actually happened? I was like, uh, I hate to tell you this, but that's true. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, that actually happened. Yeah. Because it was, uh, because uh, Tulsa was considered uh, the Black Wall Street because a lot of people in that time frame in in that area more or less made Super bucks. I mean, Tulsa, Oklahoma could have been like the new New York mm-hmm. if that riot did not happen. Yeah. And because of that riot happening in such a de- devastating spot and devastating way, I mean, they had airplanes shooting people down in the streets on our own soil. And he's like, that really happened? It's like, yeah, that stuff was whitewashed. I will tell everybody that stuff was whitewashed. Yeah. You know, and again, okay, we can go back and we can quote Winston Churchill. He said, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. That's why I I vehemently disagree with the removal of statues. I don't care who the statue is of. I I, I don't care. I mean, that's like if somebody were to sit there and, excuse me, if they were to erect a statue of Obama, pulling that statue down is not going to make him disappear as the 44th president of the United States. Okay? His his eight-year administration happened. It's part of history. Yeah. Okay. The things that he did in office, do I agree with most of them? No. But does it, is that going to, you know, just because I disagree with it, just because I didn't vote for him, is that going to make me want to go pull down a statue? No. Pulling down statues of civil war, uh, civil war generals or founding fathers of our country or, or wanting to demolish Mount Rushmore because they own slaves. Is that going to make it, is that going to make our country any less great? No. What makes our country great is the fact that we intuitively and historically have the ability to rise above our shortcomings. And that's what we did. And that's what we continue to do. Yeah, most of this. You know, but but with the way that 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 the way that that, that society is, is structured nowadays, it's all about optics. It's all about catering to the to, to the now. You know, it's the the social media generation. And I think historically, if we look as you know, as the years pass, historically, we're going to look back on on this time period. And we're going to start seeing, okay, terms like woke and, and uh, you know, gender fluid and we're even terms like social distancing. It's, I mean, we're going to look at it. I mean, this is basically going to be considered probably one of the darkest times in our history, historically speaking, because, you know, we've got, you know, so many. Yeah, see, now I can hear myself. That microphone's weird. Um, but we're we're gonna we're gonna see i mean it, it we may even be viewed this might be even be viewed as one of the least intelligent periods in our history because everybody's just so social justice oriented and it was like we need you know it's like that t-shirt that i own it says make up make america offensive again i mean we need to get back to times like that you know it's like okay or, or don't be afraid to get your feelings hurt because we've got the ability to ignore you know, we've got the ability to walk away. But instead, no. We get people who get behind a keyboard and get behind a screen. They practice the, the, the 
or they, they bask in the benefits of that anonymity and they they don't know what it means to get punched in the mouth and I'm not advocating violence so let's just not go down that road I mean what I mean you know figuratively speaking is like people are not afraid to voice these talking points or these uneducated opinions of theirs because there's no backlash there's no fear of backlash and you know while they can go in and they can delete it and then oh well I you know and they can they can they can issue some kind of half-assed apology that has no sincerity to it at all and all of a sudden they're forgiven you know it's like what happened to Kevin Hart what happened to Kevin Hart was stupid and ridiculous how he was basically shunned out of the uh, Oscars being a host of the Oscars because it's something he said like 20 years ago yeah you know and and you're gonna have and that's the problem with our our woke crowd and I I even just using that term alone is kind of repulsive to me makes my skin crawl because I, I feel like I'm losing intelligence points just by saying it. But you know, the problem with that crowd is, you know, the fact that, I mean, they've got all this time, effort, and, and energy that they're devoting to doing the research to destroy somebody. Why not use that for something a little bit more constructive? Because nobody... Nobody is the same person that they were 10 years ago, 5 years ago, even 20 years ago. People change. If the one thing that is constant throughout, throughout, throughout the course of human history is change, right? The game of baseball changes. America has changed. The way that we, you know, the way that we do things as a society has changed. We don't segregate anymore. We're inclusive as far as the races are concerned. Um, your sexuality is now, you know, I mean, it used to be being gay was illegal. You know, now it's not. Do I think that it should have ever been illegal? No. Um, you know, I mean, you, you really, at, at, I mean, to be completely and perfectly honest, I, I know plenty of gay people that are stellar human beings. Because I know a lot of gay people that are, you know, they're quality human beings. Do I agree with their lifestyle? Do I agree with some of their life choices? No, but I have that right. Just like they have their right to disagree with some of the things that I believe in. Yeah, but they really throw a really great party, too. All that aside. <laughs> you know, fuck, dude. <laughs> well, they do. I, uh, okay, great. Yeah, I'll give you that point. But that that's not what we're debating here, or, or that's not even what we're discussing. You know what I mean? We're, we're talking about... You know, human decency. Yeah. And our, our, our ability to, to innovate. And it's like, okay. And change our views basically looking at uh, a certain situation that right now could be viewed as wrong. And then later down the round uh, way, you, you talk about it. You, you discuss it. And, I, and that's what I was talking about with uh the person that was on uh for our show uh today i was Mm -hmm. like we're we want it to be very very open i mean if you have a problem with us come at us but if you don't know what you're talking about yes you will be really 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 beaten to a pulp and i would hate to be you on that side parenthetically beaten to a pulp but verbally verbally but you know, it's okay to be open-minded. Yeah. But don't be so open-minded that your brain falls out. Yeah. You know, we have to use that gray matter that is given to us between our ears for something besides filling the vacuum. You know, it... it that's, that's another thing that a lot of people don't want to do anymore these days is... They don't want to put in the effort to defend their points. Or research their point and debate it to a point where they... Th- I mean, I've I've had people just come up and was like, "Oh no, you're right. You you you're just mansplaining." It's like, dude, I just and that's another and that's another term that just absolutely gets under my skin is mansplaining. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, she actually mansplained to me today. So you know, it's like I okay, mansplained too. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I feel what is that? Femsplaining? 
You know, I mean. No, no, no. It's it's mansplaining it, it, still. And I, it, and it, I feel that I gotten a little bit of uh, I lost a lot of testosterone from that. Well, I mean, but what I'm trying to say is that it's it's. I'm trying to trying to form a, a coherent thought here. It's um. Again, we get back to our base. You know, we get back to our, our root here. If you're gonna if you're gonna come to the table, if if you're gonna come out with a position, you're gonna get behind something. Do your research on it, and I mean, do your research on it. Don't just sit there and look at one or two biased sources, and say this is what I believe in. You have to look at both sides of the argument. If you truly want to be educated on something and be well rounded in your opinion, you have to do the research on both sides. And people don't do that anymore. And unfortunately, Rob Manfred, the front office of Major League Baseball, and the Players Union have gotten behind this regurgitated talking point that somehow us wanting to uh, uphold and defend the sanctity of our electoral process is somehow racist. Get out of here. We got no time for that. And apparently Major League Baseball doesn't have any time for it either because they're just willing to take the low road what they view is to be politically expedient, what optically looks good. And I think at the end of the day, it's going to come back and it's going to bite them in the ass. Well, it usually does. Uh, look at Gillette. Exactly. Uh, look at look at a lot of the people that... I mean, the phrase nowadays isn't, oh, if, you, if you're if you woke, you'll, you'll get more benefits and everything from whatever you're doing and everything like that. No. Yeah, that's the why, that, that's is, why the go, hashtag, go, you know, get woke, go broke, broke is yeah. trending. Yeah, so I mean... It, people people are starting to come around, and thankfully so. But you, you know, it just <laughs> you, you look at you look at society as a whole right now, and it's just it's mind boggling to think that we've regressed, and it, there's there's no progression at all. Taking that taking that stance of well, these laws that require you to prove you who you are, you know, you, that you are who you say you are, is somehow racist? No. No, that's just you trying to, you know, that that's one party. And, you know, again, it's this is a leftist talking point. You trying to say that laws requiring that you pro provide uh, identification to vote is somehow racist, that is just you trying to keep your voter base under your thumb by feeding them misinformation because you know that they're too lazy to go out and do the research themselves. Exactly. And that's or all they that get, it is. Or they get the research from something that's not a viable source. Like, like I said today that I was listening to a news article from Australia, mm -hmm. and they were giving the actual news of our own country. It's sad that I had to look up a different country, or it just popped up from a different country, to give me the actual news. And they were doing it non-bias. Yeah. And they were doing it to where everything they said was right. Yeah. This is from a different country, not our country. Right. I mean, and, and <laughs> this is going to be the part that's going to be like, The easiest way to develop and raise a generation of racists is to target that group and give them misinformation. It really is. It's, it's, it's like um, the reason why we see a lot of jihadists coming out of these rural Islamic areas is because of things like Sharia law where they don't allow women to read and write. They don't allow... The, the only type of education that is given is by these quote-unquote sheikhs that get to come into the area and preach their interpretation of the Quran. Unfortunately, predominantly, it's going to be things like the Taliban or... Well, Christians in, in do some, it too. It, Christians do it too, yes. I mean, I, if, you look at, if you look at West Bow, uh, Baptist Church, I mean, those are the really... Yeah, as a Christian, Westboro... No, no. I'm going to defer that we, 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 we opt to not receive them. <laughs> exactly. But <coughs> in, in saying 
about uh, because uh, when I was uh, doing Honor Flight, uh, I had a this uh, lady that ended up uh, doing a charity organization for the uh, Green Bureau that actually was there. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about how she organized to get like papers and pencils and everything like that. And at first it was kind of mind boggling what I was uh, hearing right. because she said, when, when she was like, the only dis, uh, stipulation I had for uh, doing this organization and everything was that the girls get the pen and paper and books first. Right. And then the boys. And I was like, well, that's kind of, and I thought about it. And I, 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 she, she looked at me like I wasn't getting it. And then I was like thinking about it. I was like, well, that's kind of mess. No, never mind. And she's like, Wait a minute, you got it? I was like, yeah, I totally forgot. I'll, I'll end up saying something, then I would just like think on it. Uh, that's the thing about me is I try to think on it first before sometimes that pops out of my mouth. Most of the time I don't. I give it like 0.01% of the time that I actually know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. The rest of 99% is just me spreading out stuff. But once I'm getting... Uh, I'm able to gather my thoughts and everything because of that area. A lot of the girls or females, if you please, uh, <laughs> don't really get any kind of educational tools. And I say tools by like pen and paper, books. They're not allowed to read. They're not allowed to uh, learn mathematics and everything like that. And it's, and it's sad that you're... I mean, if you look at it, one way is people are being hindered to the point where they don't want this right here to be blossoming up and and rivaling. I was like, what we did in the United States for the longest period of time is like letting the uh, uh, women, the female populace, or the women uh, in the United States vote, right? Which they're and a lot of people are, are going to wonder how I know this, but a lot of the times in the cities and everything, the women were predominantly gathering, uh, funding the education and everything. And some of them were from the brothels. Yeah. Because that's how they got the money to do the education. And, get, and I'll say this each and every time. It's a balance. Yeah. You have to have one side and the other side coming together to solve a problem. Yeah. You know, but, uh, you know, moving into other areas here, we, every, you start, we're starting to see more and more venues open back up to full capacity. Finally. finally yes. Um, you can, you can now go into hot topic without a mask. Yeah, I did that the other day. I was like, oh, wow. Okay, no mask. I'm digging this, right? Um, yeah, when the, the mandate first came out, me and me and Kai went into, uh, went, tried to go in there. It's like, oh, you got to have a mask. You, I can go online. I can find another place to give me better deals and everything like that. Mm -hmm. I'll see you later. You you literally lost Yeah, I went into Hot Topic. I took, I took my boys in there the other day, this past weekend. Um Took my boys to go see the Demon Slayer movie, which, I admittedly, I couldn't get into it. Well, I, admittedly, okay, I, I don't know the first thing about this, you know, about the Demon Slayer anime at all. Period. Because I mean, this is this is my son's, you know, calling. It, it's it's kind of his jam, right? He loves this show. Um, they were supposed to go see it with their mom, but I guess things happened. They didn't get get around to going to see it. So I was like, you know, let's just let's go see it because I wanted to get out of the house and you know everything. And he was like, well, I want to get a Demon Slayer shirt. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So let's go to Hot Topic. You know, that's where you're going to go, right? Well, they didn't have anything. We ended up going to Spencer's. I, I told the boys, you're going to stay right there <laughs> inside the door. You're not going into Spencer's. Just not going to deal with that. Found a Why Demon not? Slayer shirt. Is there any? Oh, wait. Yeah, got a Demon Slayer <laughs> shirt there. But, you know, the Demon Slayer movie was actually... I, I really kind of dug it. I was like, wow, okay. With the exception of the like last 10 minutes with like you had your stereotypical anime cry. 
you know, the characters are like just over the top. But I there's a reason why I can't watch anime. Is that's one of the reasons because I just <laughs> it's too slow for me. Right. But getting back to the whole you know full capacity thing, uh, places like Fenway Park finally back o- you know open back to to full capacity, and and you know, <laughs> thank God you know, Texas is, you know, one of the leaders of doing things the right way. You know, Florida, they've always, they've been full capacity for a while, but let's face it, both the Marlins and the Rays. Oh, that was another thing that's happening uh, this weekend. Or you see, this weekend or next weekend is the Jake Paul and uh, Floyd Mayweather fight. That is this weekend. Is it, is that this weekend? I, I believe so. I think it was like June 9th or something like that. Uh because, I mean, usually when you sign a fight deal, I mean, there's, there's usually a couple of months in between, so that way the fighters have a chance to train. Now, Well, it's a expedition fight. Exhibi- or exhibition fight? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Be that as it may, come on, man. And I'll go back to the point that I really want to see Jake Paul get laid out. I mean, I, I want Mayweather to actually punch this guy in the in the mouth and just knock him out. I, I want to see this guy humbled like ten notches. You know, we're we're talking dial it up to eleven, spinal tap style. But anyways, so getting back to the full capacity thing, I, you know, it's the way that it should be, and it's the way that it should have always been. You know, this whole you can come at me with this whole oh we've been in the middle of a pandemic. No, don't give me that crap. It's a pandemic. It's been that way since the beginning. You know, there was no reason why we needed to shut down the damn economy. Yes, I understand people have died from this thing, but people died from H1N1, and we didn't do anything back then. But now all of a sudden, oh, we need to curb, you know, curb the, you know, uh, what is it, curb the curve or something like that? I forget what it is. But, you know, jobs. June 6th. Oh, wow, okay, cool. See, no, they needed to fight that fight on another day because you know, we can't sully D-Day with Jake Paul running his mouth. I'm sorry. That's just bad timing. Anyways, I digress. Um, getting, you know, getting back to June full 6th? capacity, June 6th is D-Day. Come on, man. Man, I got... I got... I don't know why I thought it was in July. The only thing I can think of is a lot of stuff I was doing research for with uh, uh, Jack Kirby. He was he he landed like ten days after uh-huh. D Day, right? And a lot of the sources said August. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, so. Anyways. But you know, it, all the, the the jobs that are coming back, you know, concessionaires, things of that nature, uh, uh, souvenirs. Well, even I, even like uh, jobs that even outside, jobs, yeah, outside yeah. outside the ballparks, uh, you, you, you get you get these uh, these pop up industries, you know, like the the bars, the taverns, the the gift shops, stuff like that that are opening up back back up outside these ballparks. Don't forget the scalpers. Yeah, let's not forget the scalpers. <laughs> but uh, you need tickets. I got you know. I need tickets. So, what if you need tickets? Wait, wait, no, no, that's whatever. Anyways, I'm glad to see it because baseball needs to be played with in, an audience. Oh, a lot with, of stuff with needs full up. stadiums. Um, I was trying to make a joke earlier about Florida not having, you know, I mean, they've been at full capacity for a while, but full capacity to them is maybe 25 percent, just because their teams traditionally have sucked. But to be fair whatever florida miami's not the best market for baseball at least the attendance numbers are not showing that or the wnba exactly the <laughs> wnba but they've been they they've had full capacity since <clears throat> the yeah they've had they, they were full capacity through the pandemic but uh <laughs> <laughs> it's like Did i, we I, have I like mean, a longer was, set what was it <laughs> their longer. their their cardboard cutout sales were like Rivaling their actual, you know, attendance during regular, you know, during the normal. <laughs> that's that's sad. It's like, do you really want to? I mean, it's like, 
I mean, that's sad and hilarious at the same time. Your, your cardboard cutout attending a WNBA game is giving you the same experience as actually attending a WNBA game. I know, right? But uh, <laughs> I mean, good God. Anyways, um, you know, I'm, so gl- I'm glad to see that. I'm glad to see that we're back at at full capacity. Baseball deserves yeah. to be played not only in front of an audience, but they deserve to be played in front of a full house. And you know, we're going to be able to start hearing terms like you know sellouts actual honest to god sellouts um when we whenever you hear games announced on the radio you know the attendance for today's game is blah 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 exactly um you know and and i'll be glad yes we're full full we're going back to full capacity but one of the things that's going to really hearken the return to normalcy is when you go into these ballparks like Globe Life Field, where we start seeing these plexiglass barriers being taken down. Open the ballparks up. Now, the plexiglass uh, barriers, in certain instances, I'll hand it down. I think it's a good idea. Okay. Like, like if you're a cashier, I mean... I'm what, talking about at ballparks. Yeah, I, 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 I get you. Okay, I you're in you. the stands... And you got plexiglass keeping you from seeing what's going on in the, on the field. It's distorting what's going on on the field. You can't look down into things like the bullpen without ushers getting all Gestapo on you going, you need to sit down. Like, come on, man. Really? I'm at a ballpark. We're at full capacity. We're in a state that no longer requires the face, man, or the, the fa- uh, face mask mandate. Get off my back. Let me enjoy the game. I paid to be here. I should be able to experience baseball the way that baseball is supposed to be experienced. Football, same thing. I mean, whenever the you know when the NFL season kicks back up, these these stadiums are going to be at full capacity. It's going to be heartbreaking if they have plexiglass partitions down the aisles. What is the point of going full capacity if you're going to be segregated? And I'm going to use that word because I think it's it's kind of poignant and and just to use it considering what we opened up the episode with if if we're going to be inclusive if we're going to be full capacity and we're going to try to show ourselves as being above the fray why do we need to segregate ourselves with plexiglass yeah exactly uh but i mean there wasn't really uh, other than the the baseball stuff happening and i didn't really see any kind of news for the other stuff no i you know and we're, we're getting into the swing of summer um you know the all-star game's coming up next month uh, and i can say next month because it is officially june 1st this year is really kind of st- it's really kind of flown by um <laughs> and we always say that it's like we get used to writing 2021 and by the time you know by the time we get used to writing 2021 it'll be 2022 but um you know, I, I think that, that getting back to normalcy, and I mean actual normans, normalcy, this new normal misnomer that we've got out there, we're like, oh, this is the new normal. No, that is crap. This is this is what they want us to believe to be the new normal because they're trying to control us into behaving a certain way. No, let's go back to being ourselves. Yes, we can be smarter about it. We can we can wash our hands after we get done taking a piss. So that way we're you not. You should have been doing that anyways. Yeah, do that anyways. But do we need to be more hygienic? Yeah, absolutely. Let's be smart. Common sense wasn't issued, but we need to use it anyway, folks. I mean, at least be more, you know, be smarter than a block of wet concrete. At least concrete's smart enough to dry, right? So let's do that. But let's get back to enjoying things as a society without barriers, without the without the partitioning, without the segregation. And let's just, just practice basic God-given common sense. Yeah, and there's still a lot of people that have the have this, like, stigma of touching other people right now. That's what's another thing that's really said. Now, and I foresaw this, and I've actually talked about it. I was like, there's some people that are just going to keep on wearing the mask. There's going to be some people that are, uh, won't, like, give you an actual handshake anymore. I was driving back from Denton this morning. There was people on 287. And people, well, people on 35 driving 
with masks in a car by themselves with a fucking mask on. I'm like, I know who you voted for. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I'm just like, it blows me away. You it know? does. It it really does weird me out on a lot of stuff and the the fear mongering. Yeah. And how easy? It, well, well, it's what I always tell people when I uh, when I read like. Uh, uh, Wizards for uh, Terry Goodkin's Wiz- Wizards First Rule for the uh, Sword of Truth saga, and Un- un- everybody's stupid. I mean, people will believe in a lie because they fear it's true. Uh, they fear the truth, or they believe uh, believe in a lie. And again, it goes back to that true. argument that I made about how you know, and I'll even augment it a little bit that it's insulting to a specific, you know, specific demographic. You're going to sit there and give them this information, trying to keep them under your thumb because you are, you're expecting them to be stupid enough and lazy enough to not do their own research. Yeah. And that's all it boils down to is just even the, the people that Even the people that do, do do research, they usually do the research on the first article. And I, I'll, I'll go in like three different sections. Mm-hmm. And I usually use yeah. DuckDuckGo. And that's why, you know, when I, when I, before I wanted to bring up the article this morning uh, with the uh, All Star Game lawsuit, I was like, well, that's coming from one news source. And I went out there and I looked. I mean, there's several different websites reporting the same thing. But and not on the L- uh, MLB uh, website for some reason. Yeah, MLB, for whatever reason. Uh, their app does not include anything about the lawsuit. Now, let me go back Strange. in here and refresh this. Weird. They talk about, if you go into the MLB's uh, website, they talk about details for the inaugural Lou Gehrig Day. They've got an article by Will Light, uh, for, uh, the Iron Man on every current MLB roster. They've got something about the power rankings. they got stuff about Jacob deGrom. Um the article that doesn't really mean a whole lot. Major deals don't always wait for the July trade deadline. Um, I mean, MLB is still trying to hawk their their terrible premium package for now. It's only one hundred and five dollars. You know, it's like if you if you want me to watch, if you want me to pay to watch the games, don't give me market blackouts. Don't don't put restrictions on what games I can watch, and then tell me that I can watch any game. But blackout and other restrictions apply. When I can go through the app, bad app, and listen to any game that I want, whenever I want, without restrictions, it doesn't matter if it's got a you know if if like if I want to listen to the Red Sox broadcast if they're playing in Houston, I can do that and not have it blacked out because they're playing in Texas and it's considered part of my market. You know, I, I can, I, you that's know. Almost, that's almost as bad as going to a theater and going to a concession stand. And people, and a lot of people do this to me. It's like, hey, I'm going to go get some popcorn and everything like that. You want anything? And it's like, I didn't consent to this rape. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you got to take out a second mortgage on your home just to get three large drinks at the movie theater. And I get it. That's where movie theaters make their money because they don't make dick off of the movies themselves. It's all concessions, but. Yeah. Anyways. But on that note, we're going to end this episode today. But on the end of the episode, I'm sorry we didn't do this in the beginning, which we should have done. If anything, I'll cut it and put it a bit up there. But uh, <laughs> what is it? Maria? Amelia? Maria? Amelia? Lucia. Yeah. So, Maria, yeah. Uh, I, I know her from, from from high school. We Her and I have been friends for years. Um commented she, i mean she's listening out there i mean she 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 uh she's a hot shot driver so i mean she she drives a large truck not not a semi truck but i mean it's a full-size pickup um and she hauls trailers rvs you know whatever i mean she hauls things for a living now and, and the, the credit for most truck drivers doesn't get uh, heard that much and it's part of our uh, eco, uh economy system yeah it's, it's almost the backbone yeah well, it is the backbone. Yeah, well, it is the backbone. That's very true. Yeah, how do we get, you know, products from here and there? And uh, thank you very much for uh, doing your job. I mean, a lot of people don't get, you know, thanked enough. I mean, we we, we, we thank our uh, uh, Leos and uh, first responders yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, military first responders, you know, people law enforcement. People always forget, the, like, the truck drivers, the oil fill uh, workers, a lot of people that are the backbone of our community. 
Yeah. And our country. I mean, we're, we're, our country wouldn't be nearly as great as it is and is nearly as great as it could be without the collective effort of the entire team working together, and that includes our truck drivers. That includes our hotshot drivers. I mean, it just basically our, our, our entire inter, in, interstate and interstate commerce apparatus really drives the economy. And those people, they don't get nearly enough credit. Um, I mean, they get a lot of uh, besmirchment. They get a lot of, uh, I, mean, a lot, I mean, honestly, a lot of derogatory comments made about them. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, but bottom line, yeah, I mean, Maria, thanks for, for listening. Uh, thanks for, for reaching out and, and making the comments. Um, and I'll be more to uh, do my due diligence on uh, putting it on Spotify <laughs> because I really I really uh, dropped the ball on that one. Yeah, you did. But I, I, I do. I mean, this weekend <laughs> I actually had to, uh, I put in more time to put – all of our episodes that I missed. Yeah, she she was listening to some of our earlier episodes, and she she uh she she sent me a message. She's like, uh, she didn't specify which episode it was, but she goes, there was one episode where it just sounded like you were really far away. <laughs> she goes, she goes. So there's my feedback, and I'm like, yeah, I remember that conversation. I just don't remember what episode it was on, but you were like, yeah, it just sounded like I was like in an echo chamber. Or I was like really far away from the microphone. <laughs> Oh, that was, was that the episode I was talking, and I forgot my uh, my mic was just toned off. No, she was talking about me. Oh, yeah, because I, I think maybe I was too far away from the microphone, or you know, like the mic. You know, it was like today the microphone was it was tilted this way, and you can't hear me that really well. But then when I turn it this way, yeah, the, it, these mics. I can't wait to where we can actually start getting money for this. Yeah, till we can and, upgrade our mics, yeah. Uh, upgrade our mic system, uh, upgrade our boomstick. I've had a, a jerry-rig tape on the springs, so you're not hearing the yeah, springs I mean, anymore. We are the, quite literally, we are working on a great value budget. I wouldn't even go that far. <sighs> I, I would go like Dollar Tree, man. Maybe Family Dollar? Is that still a thing? I think that's still a thing. Dollar Tree, Family Dollar, yeah, we've still got a Family Dollar here in town, I Do think. If you work for Family Dollar or a representative of Family Dollar or the corporate entity, Dollar. reach out to us. Uh, I mean, heck, even Dollar General, I mean. It's still a company, yeah. I mean, if, if anybody from, from the Goodlessville area, Goodlessville, Tennessee, that works for Dollar General has any kind of pull within that corporate building, I've been in that building, by the way. Um Oh, that's the reason why I haven't been hearing anything about Family Dollar because I don't go around that neighborhood now too much. Oh, you looked up where the Family Dollar here was? Yes. It's out by the base, right? Uh-uh. No? Oh, wow. See? Okay. It's Brook Avenue, Jacksboro Highway, and Martin Luther King Boulevard. I know where that is at. I do know where that's at. Yeah. So... Thank you for listening, everybody. That actually is <laughs> That listening. was a really awkward way to end an, uh, an I know. episode. <laughs> I know. Uh, I'm David Dickerman. I'm Johnny Skelton. Thank you for watching Nerd Sports. And as always, keep it classy, San Diego. I know.